God is still looking for people that were praised in the spirit that is true. Do you know Mary Martha that God is still having the praises of his people? And if the psalmist were able to speak, you would say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And some of you are just looking as though God has not been good to you. But those who know what God has done, go ahead and just praise God. God is, God is true. It's time that God can bring in your praise God. To the right of all the sun.
who is their God. We want to have the pattern tree like all other nations. So Samuel, we have come together and we want to say to you that we are asking you to give us our king. The Bible now tells us that now that Samuel had received the word from the people. Samuel tried to steal the people by saying, you don't need a king because God is our king. God has provided for us. God has protected us from all of the enemies all around. But the people would not hear the voice of Samuel. They begin to say, Samuel, we want a king like every nation. The Bible says Samuel went before God and began to lament before God and say, God, these people whom you've been good to over these many years, they are now saying that they want to be like all the nations that are all around. They are now saying, God, that they want to receive their independence of me. But what they do not realize that any time they think that they can be dependent of thee, they are always in the, they are always dependent still upon thee. God heard the cry of Samuel, and the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, Samuel, hearken, or hearken unto the voice of the people. Give them the desires of their heart. I know it's a hard thing, Samuel, but give them the desires.
But there are some courageous men who believed that God was leading them in that direction. They heard the negativity. Many even abandoned the ship. But they remember one thing that if we go on our own that we will never actually really be on our own. Because our hope still lies in the one who said let there be and there was. Those men in those days said we are going to make a bold step. We are going to gain our independence from Great Britain. We want to become a sovereign nation. We want to serve God by the dictates of our own hearts and not by the dictates of somebody else's heart. And so the Union Jack went down. And now the nation was singing, March on Bahamut. It was said that it was a quiet revolution. Folks were sad. Folks were joyous. Folks were afraid of the unknown. But I believe that those who were willing to make that step recognize that if God built a host, that those that labored, labored, but in vain. Now, 46 years later, the Bahamas that was known as the slogan, it is better in the Bahamas, eventually moved to, it keeps getting better yeah. and better. Yeah. Now, my friends, every time you look around, you are beginning to hear negativity about this beloved Bahamas land. Right. Murder seems to become the order of the day. It seems, Sister Val Raman, that it seems as though political unrest is also the order of the day. There used to be a time when neighbors had respect for each other. Do you remember those days? Do you remember the time whereby when you went to work, the neighbors looked out for your children? And if you said to your children, stay in the home and in Have changed. Yes. We come into 
church anyhow.
that is around them. Seven day benches. We are now finding ourselves in this position. We have forgotten where God has brought us from. Yes. We used to be a church known as people of the book. Yes. Do you remember the time, friends, when we were considered good for nothing? We were considered strange people. No one wanted to be identified as Seventh-day Adventists. You used to be ostracized. Folks laughed at you because you went to church on another day. You didn't eat this and you didn't eat that. You didn't wear this and you didn't wear that. You were always an envy. That's right. You remember those days, envies before it was a -Y? You were forced to go to church even when you didn't want to go to church. You remember the times when there used to be fellowship meals and most churches out of the church? You remember the time, my friend, when we wore together? But as blessings came, so we begin to separate ourselves. Now we are saying as a church that we want to become like everybody else. They are doing this and they are doing that. They are running around and they are not running around. They said that we want to be like every other nation. Seventh-day Adventists, can I remind you, there is nothing wrong with lifting your hands and praising God. There's nothing wrong with getting a little show every now and again. Because every time you show, it means that the blood is still running warm in your veins. Every time you lift your hands to God, you're saying, God, you've kept me thus far from danger seen and unseen. Every time you lift your hands, you're thanking God.
they have a king. Just as the Lord said came to pass, vineyards gone, daughters gone, sons slaughtered in the armies. But that's not it, church. Also, the presence of God was gone. The presence of God was also gone. We won independence. I knew that many of us could not make it to reach 18. We couldn't make it to reach 18. But boy, what I wouldn't do to be a child again. No light bill. No water bill. I could have still wore some and just eat a food. <laughs> now I'm understanding now that I got to take care of these little, my two daughters, and every minute since the morning I hear, Daddy, can I have a snack? Gone. Daddy, can I have a snack? Gone. Where shall they come from day to day? Yeah, they, what you call They have snack all day. You let me snack all you? Mom, leave them alone.
You are peculiar people. You're being called on that Ramsey. You're being called on to be different. God, I've called you to be different. You don't have to want to be like every other denomination. You don't have to want to be like every other church. I'm not saying that you cannot learn from them, but the truth is, you must never forget why you exist. Our existence is to go on the highways and the byways and the hedges and compel men and women to come and let them know that a day is coming. A day is fast approaching. And I'm saying to you, my friends, enjoy all the things that God over has blessed you with. Enjoy the material possession, but never forget where it all began. It was God and God alone. And no matter how great you become in life, you are always dependent upon God. No matter how much you've been blessed with, Sister Chuno, God is still the source of your supply. Independent, but still dependent. We are in our independent nation, but our dependent is still on God. And the truth is, what I cannot understand, after 46 years, we say we are independent, but the truth is, no one is ever really independent. I don't care how much you say that you're independent. Let me prove to you. Most of our foods is from North America. But you're independent, but you're still dependent on North America. Most of our material is from North America, but you're independent. True? You're independent, but yet you still have to go to Privy Council to make a decision? The truth is, you're not really independent. Because you are still dependent. And even America, who is the perhaps the last superpower, is still not an independent nation. Can I prove it to you? That's why she has so many allies. That's why she puts um, embassies in countries around the world. Because she recognized that she needs dependence in the midst of independence. We celebrate our 46 years of independence. But the truth is we're not independent. We're still dependent upon God. Everybody needs somebody sometime in their lifetime. Some of us have this attitude, I don't need you. The truth is, yes, I need you. Oh, I don't need you. The truth is, you come down there and see who will pick you up. You and Trey, now your home's on fire, and those neighbors you don't get along with. If you don't need them, they'll watch your home's burning down, and we don't care what happened to you. You see, anytime we become prosperous, Israel is becoming a prosperous church. We feel as though we don't need anybody on the give. Oh, I have seven cars. I have 15 trucks. But the truth is, you have no friends. And I'm telling you, my friends, when we live a life of independent and isolation, in a time of our calamity, people will laugh at us. They will laugh at us. And so Israel said, God, give us a king. God said, go ahead. How would you want? And Israel, ever since then, they are fighting till this very day. The Messiah have come, and yet they haven't accepted him as Messiah. Do you know, church, even as an independent nation, my friends, we still need God. Because from 1973 to 19 or 2019, my friend, it's not so good. It's, it's not a good thing even to want to be identified as a behavior anymore. Every time you look around, you see negativity all around. The cruise ships are telling the visitors, take your rings off, take your watches off, take your chains off, because Nassau is a brutal place. Don't go over the hill. Stay in the inner, stay over in the suburb because if you go over the hill, you will be raped, you will be robbed. And we know that some of these things ain't true. But that's not how the international community sees us. Could it be, my friend, because we thought that we no longer need God anymore? 
And God said, you don't need me? Go ahead. One of our greatest fears as a nation, my friend, is one day our dollar will devalue. And when it devalues, what will we say? We've got to go back to the old landmark church. We've got to be more loving. We've got to be more caring. We've got to be more understanding. And I've got to say that end right here because we've got to be back here for five o'clock. But I want to say this, my friends. I've always asked the question, why do we have fellowship time in church? Because I may never have a chance to say it again. If we are loving from the outset of the door, there's no need to be hugging during the service time. I'm not, I don't have a problem with it. Listen to what I'm saying. No one needs to tell me to shake the person hand next door and say, I love you. Because when I am greeted from the door, I will feel the love. Yes. That no one will have to say, shake that person hand and say you love me. They would know that they're already being loved. When you come inside church with my friends, and Mark and I better say, when a stranger, because that testimony touched me this morning by Sister Tasha. When folks come in this church, we ought to reach out and be intentional and go and shake their hand and say, welcome to my and church. Amen. We ought to go in our way and say, it's good to have you. Where are you from? My friend, hear me today. I went to a particular church in a particular place. No one knew I was the pastor. And I sat inside a church and a person, I was sitting right here and the person was right here and they squeezed through and they passed they showed the person hand. And then the guy came and said, hey, boss, how you doing? And the person, you, pastor, and she, and she went to, yeah, no, she, she, no, she went to shake my hand, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were from the Bahamas, I didn't know pastor. Okay, so, perfect. Yeah. No, yeah, you know, I said, pastor, but you go. No, I went, I want to know how I felt. Because you did not know why it was. You didn't even recognize it. My friends, when strangers come, you will be entertaining angels all the way. Be intentional. Go to people and say hello. We're talking independence. This is independence all about. Let's go to our ways and thank you, Helen McKenzie, for just reaching out and shaking the sister hand. Do you know that folks will come in this church and they will never come back and they will never be missed because we were not intentional. When folks come in that door, the greeters are supposed to have the biggest smile on their faces. Amen. Welcome to Maranatha Church. I'm not telling you they're not doing it because I'm not there. I but just in case, but I believe they're doing it because folks are coming back. Yeah. Be intentional. Hug them. Shake their hand. Say, welcome to Maranatha Church. Take them to their seat down again. Give them a hymnal. And if they're not, they don't have a hymnal with them, open the hymnal and share with them like praise. And let them know that we're glad to have you. And when they would have left you, jump on the phone to the week and call and say, we are so glad to have you at Maranatha Church. And when we make people feel comfortable, my friends, they will continue to come back over and over again. Independence is a good thing, but it can also be a tricky thing. Because you can feel that you are in need of nothing and no need of anybody. But I want to tell you the truth, my friends. We may be independent, but always dependent. Because God is the source of our supply. Amen. And even as we celebrate 46 years as a nation, my friends, it's sad. It's troubling. It's rough. Yes. Folks are losing jobs left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. Folks are afraid to miss work even when they're sick. Because they're afraid that they may be the next one. When this country went independent, this was never a part of it. But we have become so arrogant as a people. Yes. Arrogant as a nation. Yes. Don't I'm telling you the truth. We become so proud yes. that God knows how to get our attention. Yes. God can send an earthquake and shake us right up. God can send another hard 
talking that we're running all around this territory. Independence calls for loving each other, my friends. Yeah. Jesus said, when all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. I pray, my friend, that as a behemoth, I never have to run to somebody else's country. Let's start loving people, my friends. That's what independence is all about, love. Love not only for God, but love for our fellow men. And even when we become independent, all those remember that we're still dependent upon God. Amen. And I want to say to us all you who are, whether you are indigenous or we are guests, happy independence by us. God has been good to us. Father in heaven today, we thank you for the time we spent in your presence. Remind us as a church, Lord, who are being called Lord, for a specific reason task, and that is to spread the final warning message in this world. Lift up the trumpet. Allow let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Lord, help us never to become so independent that we think that we don't need you anymore. Thank you for this nation, Lord. In spite of the many challenges, the many setbacks, Lord, this is still our home. This is still the land which you have loaned us for this time and this season. As a nation, Lord, we have sinned. We have turned our backs on you. We've been blessed, Lord, with wealth, but we have forgotten the source of it. And Lord, as a nation, we pour before you saying, we're sorry, Lord. Be the Lord of our nation once again. Be the Lord of our lives once again. Oh God, bless this Maranatha the church family. May you keep us, Lord. And even when after all is said and done, we look for it for a day where dwell in righteousness, where Jesus is the light of that city. And so, Lord, as we leave here today, though we are independent, remind us, Father, that we are always dependent because it is you who live, move, and have our very being. Amen. And, Father, we say thank you for the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.